Hey guys, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. It's Beer 30. Let's go take a walk, see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Look at how big this bottle is. Uh, this is uh, uh, Barrel Age Old Ruffian from Great Divide Brewing and they are out of Colorado, from Denver, Colorado. Uh, this is a 750 milliliter bottle, guys. And this is a barrel age version. I've already done the regular version of this. Uh, Rico sent me this. Guys, this is not a cheap bottle of beer. This is, this is every bit a $25 bottle of beer. Rico, thank you, my brother. You, the two beer mail packages you have sent me with the awesome beers in there, it blows me away the amount of money that you've spent on the beers that you have sent me, sir. You are a true friend, a true craft beer lover, and you're, you're number one, guys. You're the man. You are the man. Uh, these beers, when they get to this magnitude and get to this, this price range, to have somebody spend their hard earned money on something of this size and this expense, and then to package it up and send it with 10, 12 other beers in the same. I mean, the box he sent me was this tall and this wide. I mean, it blew me away when I come home and seen it. And when I opened it up and seen all the, the high dollar beers and, and the highly sought after beers he sent me, I was... I was I was blown away, and I still am. I still am blown away that that I have subscribers that are that are that generous that can, that will go and spend that kind of money on on uh, uh, wonderful beers and, uh, and and packaging up and, and pay to ship a box that size. I mean, I I, I wouldn't be afraid to say that was a two hundred dollar box of beers, guys. And it just blows me away, the generosity of my subscribers sometimes. It really does. Rico, from the bottom of my heart, sir, I do appreciate it. You are, you are the man, and you are a true craft beer connoisseur, no doubt about it. Uh, this beer is a whopping 11.8%. Uh, and it does have, in Great Divide dates or stuff, they've been dating the bottle on dates for a long, 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 long time. One of the first ones that I know of that actually put the bottle on date on the freaking label where you can read it, not etched on the bottle or written in black where you can't see it. It's been on, on the bottle label for as long as I can remember, five or six years or longer. So, uh, no guesswork, guys. This was bottled on March 26th of 2015. So, and I'm reviewing this on April the 13th. Of 2016, so this has been in the bottle for over a year, not counting how long it was in the uh, barrels, uh, sitting and conditioning before they even put it in the bottle. So this should uh, be a very well aged beer, and for uh, this style of beer, which is a barley wine, uh, and this magnitude of 11.8 percent, this beer is going to keep for a long, long time—5, 10, 15, even 20 years. This beer is going to keep, guys. So, <clears throat> as much as I'd like to sell her something like this, I know how expensive something like this is. And I, I damn sure feel obligated when somebody like Rico spends $25 for this one particular bottle. And, uh, not counting all the rest of them that were chucked into the box that were high dollar beers. And then and pays to ship it to me. I, I do feel obligated and I will review them in a very timely manner. And on uh, another side note, this is the last beer review you're going to see me do for several weeks, guys. We're getting ready to go to Florida. So, I'm going to take a little siesta. Uh, and I do that about once a year. Uh, and this is it's time for me. We're going to go to Florida and, 
uh, enjoy Bike Week for uh, for a little bit, and uh, look for some look at some houses while we're down there and see what we can come up with. We're getting ready to uh, put this one on the market, hopefully uh, finishing up uh, some work down in the basement, and uh, hopefully um, we never know. I'm not going to give this house away. It's a very nice house. I've spent a lot of money on it the last nine, ten months. Uh, and if I don't get what I want for it, we're going to stay here for a little while. So, not putting all my eggs in one basket and not hoping, uh, I am, am hoping for the best, but like I said, I'm not going to give it away. So, if we end up having to stay here for a little while longer, that's what will happen. Alright, let's get on with this one, guys. Commercial description says this special release of our acclaimed hefty barley wine that has been aged for over nine months in Straight Hands Colorado Risky Barrels. So, it was in the barrels for nine months, and it's been in the bottle about 11 months. No. It's been in the bottle 13 months. This is April. So it's been in the bottle 13 months. So that's almost two years from the time this beer was brewed to right now to we're getting ready to pop the cap on it. A long time. A long time. And that costs money. That's why this beer is $25 a freaking bottle. It does. The process tempers old roughing edges with a metalled version of heady whiskey flavors and subtle oak notes. Each limited edition, individually numbered bottle, especially in its own right, is rounded wonder clocks in at 85 and 90 IBUs. So we got the IBUs, we got the ABV, and we got the bottled on date. We got all the information we need uh, for this beer anyway. So, food prayers for this style of beer, for a barley wine. Uh, it doesn't have a cuisine. The cheese is a sharp blue cheddar and your pun more pungent, stronger cheeses. And since it is a barley wine, it goes well. They say it dessert digestive. So, glass wire is a pint becker and Ike tumbler snifter. Uh, I've got my favorite glass, the sovereign beer glass today. And can be sold for a long, 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 long time. However you feel like selling it. You want to drink it now? You want to drink it five years? You want to drink it ten years? You want to drink it twenty years? This beer will sell it. So it's entirely up to you. A great beer to sell. And as you sell it, it's going to get more complex over time. And uh, the guys at uh, the Great Divide don't glue their cap. They're full on like Avery does. Avery makes some wonderful beers. I'm a big fan of their beer. But they glue their tin full on where it comes off in little teeny pieces. Not like this. I'm not a fan of Avery's full. But these guys at uh, the Great Divide Got it going on. We get all the information we need here, guys. Ah, not a big hiss. Fairly small hiss, to be honest about it. And let's see what kind of head it generates. I'm not going to get too carried away if it starts getting crazy. Oh, that looks like it's going to be good. Straight down the center here, guys. Perfect. Perfect. Got a finger of head on a straight down the center pour. The color eh, is, is brownish. Uh, I mean, a lot of the barley wines are this color. It has a slight r ruby tinge around the big part of the glass, but down here in the small part of the glass, it looks pretty brown. Looks like a brown ale. But I got a feeling it's going to have a lot more ass than any brown ale is going to have. So, good looking beer. Let's get a nose on it. Ooh, give you a little bit of booziness there. So, like I said, this may be a really prime candidate to sell for a while and let that booziness settle down a little bit. Sometimes it does, sometimes it don't. But uh, it, it won't hurt. I am getting some booziness for 11 uh, percent or almost 12 percent. Or actually, uh, Beer Advocate has it at 12.70. Before I get carried away, let me confirm this. And they have it at 11.8 at the rate beer. Let's see if it's, I don't, don't know if it's written on the bottle. Let's take a look. Actually, it says 10.2 percent alcohol by volume right here in the corner. So they're both wrong. And beers like this a lot of times change from year to year when they when they brew and make this. The recipe changes a little bit and a lot of times even if the recipe doesn't change, a lot of times the alcohol uh, ABV is a little different from batch to batch. So. 10.2%. So it, it is a little boozy for a 10.2%. But you got to realize it's been in uh, whiskey barrels and it's going to pick up some of that booziness from the barrel. 
caramel, toffee. Very heavy sweetness on the back end here. Some dark fruit in there, raisins, dates, figs, plums. A very sweet smelling beer like most of your barley wines are. Well, I've ran and raved long enough. It's time. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rico, my brother. You, you the man, buddy. You are the freaking man. Cheers. Wow. Wow, that is outstanding. The booziness is heavier on the nose than it is on the taste to me, guys. It's there. There's no burning or any of that. You just got to realize you're drinking a barrel-aged barley wine. It's not going to taste like a Baltic Porter. It's not going to taste like a five and a half percenter. It's just not. You're going to get some nuances from the barrel, some woodiness, some oakiness, some vanilla. And being a barley wine, you're going to get that caramel and toffee. And heavy sugar, almost like a uh, brown sugar or a molasses in there. Definitely getting the molasses on the nose and brown sugar. Wow. A great beer to finish up the beer reviews before I go on vacation. Excellent beer for that. Wow. That's delicious. Well, and it's a great big bottle. I still got this much in there. I'm going to pour her a big old glass and uh, see what she thinks about it. I know she's going to love it. I actually asked her. I said, I'm getting ready to do the last beer review before we go on vacation. Which one? And she looked in the refrigerator. She, she picked this out. She wanted, she wanted to taste this one before we left. So, that's what I did. So, we're going to pour her a glass and we're going to sip on it for... 45 minutes to an hour and see where it ends up and see how shit-faced I am when I come back and uh, we'll give the final chug and grade then. I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back. Got just a little left. Been sitting on about 45, 50 minutes, close to an hour now. Awesome beer. It is very, very tasty. Uh, when I did the old Ruffian review, I said, no, way this could be better if you barrel aged it. Well, that's what they've done on this one. Uh, this is a barrel aged version of the old Ruffian very very tasty uh, it's awesome guys it's uh, it's got everything that you want in a barrel aged barley wine the cop coffee the toffee the caramel uh, the dark fruits are there the uh, the bourbon from the barrel aging the vanilla maybe a slight hint of some coconut in there some brown sugar or molasses very very nice very very nice indeed we got the IBUs we got the ABB we've got the date on the label you know on a bottle on date not an enjoy by or best by date uh, it's a win-win-win situation for all of us craft beer drinkers uh, whether you're a reviewer or not uh, you got the information you need to make a conscientious purchase on this beer, even though this is a pricey beer, now, like I told you guys, this is this is this is a twenty-five dollar bottle of beer, and some places it may be even more than that. I know this is a high-dollar beer, and most definitely is. So, Rico, once again, thank you, my brother. You you're freaking awesome, dude. Let's do the final chug. Still got the heavy bourbon aromas, uh, and a lot of people. Mix that up with alcohol uh, as far as being boozy. It smells boozy on the nose, but it doesn't taste boozy at all. So easy drinking. And this is a 10.2% is what I have on the bottle here. Not 11.8 or 12.7 that both of the uh, rate beer and, and uh, beer advocate have. So it, evidently it changes from year to year when they do these styles of beer. So It's pretty damn tasty though. Like, like I told you earlier, a great beer to wrap up the beer reviews uh, while I'm gone on vacation. So uh, hope you're enjoying this. I am.
Fire truck. <sighs> Wonderful aroma. Went very well with the Alex Bradley cigar that I was uh, uh, puffing on out of the deck while I was enjoying this. Very, very nice. Goes very well with a nice uh, full body cigar. I'll put it that way. No matter what you're smoking, uh, as long as you're doing um, um, a medium to full bodied uh, cigar, along with this big, bold, rich barley wine, it should pair very well. I wouldn't do any kind of Connecticut wrapped or lighter medium or or, or mild cigar with this because the, the beer is going to overpower your cigar. So, uh, with that being said, guys, uh, to me it's a ten. It is a ten. We got all the information we need on the bottle, bottle on date. It doesn't have the IBUs listed here, but it's right here on uh, on Rate Beer telling me that it is eighty eight. But of course, the ABB is not correct on this or there and it doesn't have it on here I don't think let me look one more time no it does not have the IBUs listed on the bottle I'd like to see that but it's not critical but it does have the bottle on date here and it does have the ABV at 10.2 percent so uh, two out of three ain't too bad you think yeah especially for this style uh, very nice very well done very nice beer to wrap up the evening with uh, before your dinner or with your stronger dish dinner or even after dinner as an aspartite or digestive uh, very nice very nice beer the other half love this uh, I knew she would uh, and I knew I would too uh, anytime you get a barrel aged barley wine or a stout or or an imperial porter or something like that that's been done into, into bourbon barrels or whiskey barrels or whatever it, it adds that little aspect, a, a, little, a little bit more complexity to the beer. And like I said, I told you earlier, this would be a great beer to sell for, for a while. Two, three, five, ten, fifteen, even twenty years. It's just going to get more complex. And, and I think they do this, this style of beer uh, every year. I'm not sure, but I think they do. And uh, it would be a good one to do a vertical of. I mean, buy you, buy you one this year and then next year or the year after buy another one or five years down the road and, and do a vertical see how the one you sell uh, for a couple of years five years ten years compares to a fresh bottle see how more complex it is so uh, very nice especially if you have deep pockets you can afford to buy a 25 dollar bottle of beer which is what this is it is it is, a, it is an expensive beer it's a pricey beer but it is a delicious beer 10 for me it's a 100 and like I said, both of these guys have uh, different ABVs, uh, so take these ratings with a grain of salt. Uh, Beer Advocate says it's a 12.7, and they say it's a 91 and outstanding. It's only a 10.2, this particular version. And Rate Beer has it at 99 overall and 98 in a style, but they have it listed at 11.8%. So take that with a grain of salt. So we got a 91 and a 99, and this 10.2% for me is a 100. So... I think it's awesome. I think it's well deserving of the 100. Very well made beer, very tasty beer, a great beer to finish up the evening with, and a great beer for me to finish up the beer reviews before I go on vacation. So, guys, I hope you miss me because I'm going to be gone for a couple of weeks and there won't be any beer reviews. So, if you've had this one from uh, Great Divide, their old ruffian barrel age version, let me know what you think, guys. And uh, until we meet again, uh, see you when I get back. And then when I get back, we'll go see what's in the fridge. See you then.